better get up and just um, introduce our next speaker because she won't go anywhere without an introduction. <coughs> so um, I just want to welcome Paris Lees, uh, who has actually agreed to be one of our patrons, along with Matthew Todd, who's also joined us this evening. So a warm hand, as always, for Mr. Paris Lees. because I'm not here to uh, celebrate boobs and uh, I haven't got an iTunes single out or anything like that. But, um, I haven't got a PowerPoint presentation actually, but I do have some things to say about trans people. Have we got any trans people here tonight? Hey! <laughs> yeah, a bit quiet. Does that feel good, putting your hands up? I certainly wouldn't have been able to do this three years ago, speak in front of a big group of people like this. So. Uh, thank you all for being so trans-inclusive and the great work that you're doing here with Out, Out Towns East. Trans people have been around forever in every recorded culture, human culture, in history. Uh, we were in the Bible as eunuchs um, to the Hijra today who still castrate themselves. And um, I've got a few statistics here. Um, there's half a million trans people in the UK, so it's about the size of a small city, well, an average sized city. And 30% of these have attempted suicide. A study in the States uh, in the past couple of years showed that 41% had attempted suicide. So clearly a lot of people are struggling with being trans. A few more stats. 73% of trans people have experienced some form of harassment in a public space, ranging from comments to verbal abuse and even violence. 21% stated that they avoided going out because they feared such harassment. 46% stated, 46 stated that they'd experienced harassment in their neighbourhoods. And 64% of young trans men and 44% of young trans women experience harassment or bullying at school, not just from their fellow pupils, but also from staff and teachers. I've got a quote here, and we can play a little game and tell where this comes from. The NHS is not a welcoming place for many trans people. Much of their medical treatment they will pay for themselves, and if any treatment is actually obtained, it is often a result of a Herculean struggle past recalcitrant GPs, rude nursing staff, arrogant and demanding psychiatrists, finally to be met with the news that there are very few surgeons and the waiting list is several years long. It is surprising then that many sell their homes in order to be able to self-finance their own way through the private route ways to surgery in Thailand. Does anybody have any idea where that comes from? Angry trans person online? Okay. That's actually from the Department of Health um, in conjunction with <coughs> rights in healthcare as a guide on how trans people experience the NHS in the UK. So clearly there's a bit of a problem. I first went to my doctor about five years ago and said that I wanted to transition. Bless her, she was a little bit confused. She thought I wanted to become a man. But um, <laughs> that wasn't the direction I was going in. Um, and I, I didn't get referred. And I moved to Brighton and I, I transitioned, but I didn't have any kind of medical help or support. And I wasn't always <coughs> passing as female. I was very unhappy. I didn't have psychological support. My mental health really suffered as a consequence. I became one of these people who was harassed in the street and I didn't want to go outside and my world of where I felt safe became smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it was just my bed set, you know, and I, I didn't even feel like I could go down to the corner shop. Finally, I picked up the courage to find a GP in Brighton after living there for about two years. And it sounds ridiculous now, but it was, it was a Herculean task just to get to the bottom of my road. And it was literally at the bottom of my road just to get to a GP. And my GP was really good, he was really honest, and he said, I don't really know anything about this, and I'm going to go away and do some research. And he did. And um, he referred me to a local psychiatrist, and then I got referred to the Gender Identity Clinic, and there were a number of hoops to jump through. Uh, but finally, I got the care that I needed. 
and after a number of appointments I started on the medical pathway and I began hormones amongst other things and I started to feel more myself. And the third summer that I lived in Brighton, I actually went in the sea and I swam because I felt more comfortable about my body and I felt really confident. And ever since then, I've been on an upward spiral. Um, I'm in love, um, I've got a boyfriend, um, I got my degree, because uh, so my studies had actually been suffering at the time because I didn't, you know, I missed a lot of lessons because I didn't want to go in. Um, and I moved to London, which would have been unimaginable, you know, all the people in London. Um, and I am now editing the Mets magazine. Um, I'm afraid this doesn't move on you, but if you buy it, <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> the most important message I've got to buy it. So, um, yeah, if you buy it. And, there's never been a magazine that's aimed at the whole of the trans community and this is a stable mate to uh, Gay Times and Diva, both of which I write for. Um, I'm so proud of this and uh, it, was, it was a lot of work and effort and I really feel that we need something which speaks to trans people. So that's one of the, the things that I'm doing at the moment that I'm really proud of. I'm also really proud of my work with uh, Trans Media Watch campaigning to make uh, the media better for trans people because we've actually got a lot of the laws in place in this country um, to protect trans people. What we really need to do is win the hearts and minds of people and I think that the, the media is really key to that and I'll be doing some presenting with Radio 1 and Channel 4 later this year so very exciting year for me and all of this has happened in the past two years because I've had that support. Three years ago I was on antidepressants um, now I'm on estrogen and I'm very happy, I'm very fulfilled, I'm having a really wonderful life and I feel like I'm contributing a lot back. And if you look at the younger generation of trans people who are transitioning younger and younger and getting that support, there's absolutely no stopping them. I don't know if any of you have seen Jackie Green in, in the newspapers recently. She's uh, the Miss England hopeful, um, whatever you think of that. Um, but she's, she's, she's living her life and that's what she wants to do. She's kind of unstoppable. I mean, she had her own struggles as a child, but the younger generation of trans people are not facing some of the social pressures and conflicts and struggles that the older generation did. And I think that's fantastic. And I think it's really important to remember that being trans in itself is not a problem. A lot of the issues that we face are other people's reactions to us, actually. Um, being trans, is, is it like being gay? What is it? I mean, I guess most of the people who are here today are a little bit more clued up on it. Um, a lot of people would say being trans has nothing to do with being gay. My view is that the LGBT community does have a common purpose. I believe that we were all told when we were born that one day you'll grow up and this is what your life will be like based upon the genitals that we had. And I identified as gay for a bit, as, as, as many trans women did, and there's a big overlap between the trans man culture and the lesbian culture. And we kind of get punched by the same people, don't we? I was punching the microphone, that's so passionate. Um, so it's really, really, really good to come here together and feel part of uh, a wider LGBT community, because it's something that I really, really believe in. Um, I haven't had my two minutes yet, but I think I'm, I'm drawing two. That's points. good, we need to catch up on time. Well, you know, these other people went over, so I'm just going under because I'm accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not talking about sex, which is weird for me, and everybody else was. So, But um, yeah, if you'd like to get involved, um, check out Transmedia Watch, check out Transmedia Action. We're doing loads of exciting, proactive, forward looking, uh, out outward looking, uh, very kind of energised, um, constructive activism with Transmedia Action. Um, check out Men's Magazine, check out me, and um, yeah, have a lovely evening. <laughs>